The NASCAR Pinty Series makes its return to the province of Quebec for round four of the 2021 season. 18 cars are lined up and ready to conquer the street circuit at ICAR. The True North Strong and Fast has left the gate in a flurry of racing action. Events one and two witness some hard-nosed, tough, short track action with Raphael Lazar dominating the winner's circle in both outcomes. Then the streets of Trois-Rivières hosted round three with a handful of leaders, but it was Alex Tagliani who led last to enjoy the sweet taste of victory. Now the NASCAR Pinty Series moves to a road course that races more like a short track. Welcome to the 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series Championship right here on TSN. We're at the International Center of Advanced Racing as we ready for the La Fernadière Summer Classic. Hello everyone and welcome to Circuit iCar. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross and Todd Lewis is trackside for us here today. 18 cars set to do battle for 75 laps here today. And Adam, it's been a long five years since we were here at this track, but in 2017, it was one of the most memorable races we had on that year's calendar. Dave, this is a great little road course. 1.6 kilometers, seven turns, heavy braking zones, tight corners. Reminds me a lot of a short track, the way they race it. Very competitive last time we were out. And if we take a look at the point standings coming into this event, Raphael Lassard is on top only by one point. Alex Tagliani right there in second spot. But it's so tight at the top of the point standings. LP Dumoulin is not far behind. And 17-year-old Trayton Lapsovich sitting in fourth. Remember, he's also trying to become the 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series Rookie of the Year. Trayton's fast, he's impressive, and he's aggressive out there. Last race out at Trois Rivières, an impressive fourth place finish on his first ever street course. I think he's positioning himself for a run at the Pinty Series Championship, just like older brother Caden did back in 2016. Another notable name makes a return to the series here today, and that's Matthew Skinnell. He'll be driving the number seven Ford Fusion prepared by Jacobs Racing. A prominent racing name out of Ontario, the Scannell family. Another prominent racing name. Good to see Sam Fellows back behind the wheel. They struggled with braking problems at Trois Rivières. He's hoping for a better run here this afternoon. And we'll head down trackside and say hello to Todd Lewis, who has more on a notable absentee here today. Todd? That notable missing driver, Dave, is, of course, Raphael Lassard, who leads the point championship after two victories to start the season, but only by a single point over this man, Alex Tagliani, who lives very close by. You had a victory at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. You were good in qualifying, very methodical. We've got rain now. What do you expect today? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I just want to come out here with uh, as many points as we can. Um, the team has done a great job so far. And we seem to have like little issues here and there in practice qualifying. Our break are not, you know, where we want it to be. But somehow, so far, they always come up with some magic before the race. And uh, hopefully we're there and, uh, you know, we'll be able to come out on top this, uh, this, this race. Good luck today. Thanks, buddy. That's Alex Tagliani, who had a fantastic event at his Tag e-karting facility not far from here with the NASCAR family last night. Fantastic electric go-karts, axe throwing, and so much more. Alex Tagliani will roll off third for today's race here at Circuit iCar. On the pole will be the number 51 of Andrew Ranger, who posted a time of 46.8 seconds, the 27th pole of his career. He will lead the field to green in a little bit of a light sprinkle as it stands right now, guys. Todd, when we were here in 2017, a lot of teams didn't make it the distance on fuel. It left drivers on the track unable to make it to the finish. What's been done this time around to make sure that doesn't happen again? NASCAR was very specific in the instructions as teams went through technical inspection before qualifying. They have also allowed the teams to top up their fuel tanks before today's 75-lap race. We should avoid the fuel issues. I'm sure a lot of crew chiefs have been busy calculating fuel mileage, trying to make sure they don't run into those same problems again. When we return, we'll see who has what it takes to conquer iCar. The drivers are strapping in. And when we return, we'll fire the engines for round number four of the NASCAR Pinty Series here on TSA. Cast is brought to you by Fast Eddie Speedwear, combustion culture collection available at fasteddiespeedwear.com. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By General Tire, the exclusive tire of the NASCAR Pinty Series. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. The car's on the racing surface, David. 
Mother Nature can't decide what she wants to do with this day. It's been raining, it's been dry right now. The track looks dry and raceable. It is not going to stay that way. Let's look at the E3 Spark Plug starting grid. Andrew Ranger, your pole sitter, he'll start alongside Kevin Lacroix. Alex Tagliani, one last time out, will start third. There's Mark Antoine Cameron in fourth. Row three, LP Dumoulin in the 47 alongside Alex Gannett in the 52. Trayton Lapsovich starts in seventh in the 20 alongside DJ Kennington. Looking back to row number five, that's where we find the seven of Matthew Skinnell. Look Lesage, a good qualifying effort in the number 25. Row six has Dexter Stacy in the 92 and Mark Dilley in the 64. To row number seven, Sam Fellows in the 98. Brett Taylor behind the wheel of the number three. In the eighth row, we find J.F. LaBerge in the 80 machine alongside Ray Jr. Cordemanche in the number eight. Row nine, T.J. Rinomato in the two. Larry Jackson had problems in practice in the 84. We'll round out today's field. Dave, we've alluded to it in the warm-up and getting to this point, but this is a road course that drives like a short track, and the reason I think so is right here in the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. We're going 75 laps, that's the distance today, but look at the track length, it's 1.6 kilometers. It's a short seven turns, no planned pit stops today, so it will be a sprint right from the drop of the green. Almost every corner is an opportunity for these drivers to pass. This is a super aggressive front row. Andrew Ranger, a four-time winner here at Circuit Icar alongside Kevin Lacroix, and they thunder their way into turn number one. We're underway here at Circuit Icar. Andrew Ranger leading the way through the corner. He pulls away towards turn number two, leaving Kevin Lacroix to deal with the 18 of Alex Tagliani. You see everybody getting sorted out in the early going here. They're single file heading to this hairpin in turn number three. This is a great place for a passing opportunity. Oh, and Andrew Ranger pushes up in the middle of the corner. He's able to get on the throttle, and Kevin Lacroix got a little squirrely. You can see there's some wet spots on the track. Now, if you get off the racing line, you can see these cars start to dance around. No pressure here. Clear by two. And that is spotter Joe Chisholm Jr. speaking to the 51 of Andrew Ranger, who did a little slide himself. Concrete surface all around this racetrack. Of course, it's a former airport here in Mirabelle. And the concrete matters more so in the dry. When it's wet, you just can't hook up to anything. It doesn't matter what the surface is when it's wet. These big general tires don't want to grip it. You could see Andrew Ranger on the verge of control in that opening lap, but he's got to get out. He's got to get out in front, because right there we saw Lacroix get the car a little sideways on corner exit. Both these drivers want to be leading. You hear just how slow they get into that hairpin. They get hard back on the gas, ease it through turn number four. And if you take a trip around this surface, some of the curving on corner exit especially is rather harsh here at Sir Cree Icar. So it really penalizes the drivers if they slide off the exit of a corner. So it's something that they have to be mindful of over the course of the 75 lap race. And when they put these race courses together, they had to do it because this is an airport circuit. It's basically flat all the way around. They had to build some character and boundaries into it. And Quickwick wants you to name their caveman. You can go to quickwick.com. Of course, Quickwick, big supporters of Trayton Lapsovich in the 20, is chasing DJ Kennington in the 17. You have some ideas, Adam? Does the hair on the caveman ever make you jealous, Dave? <laughs> Lately, yes. So much so. I, then I want to name him Dave. <laughs> Back to this lead battle between Andrew Ranger and Kevin Lacroix. No, clear by that. No pressure. Alex Tagliani not too far behind either. Tagliani has sat on the pole three times here at Sir Cree Icar. Has finished with three top fives. Has failed to win a race here at Sir Cree Icar. So we talked about fuel being a concern for these teams. The other concern here, we're only talking about seven corners on this, this road course. Three of them are very tight, heavy braking, hairpin turns. Brakes is the other issue. So I look back at Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22, LP Dumoulin in the 47, and I think, are they playing this smart right now? They don't want to be up here where you can start taking fiberglass off the car by rubbing, but they're keeping the leaders in their sight. We've seen that in the past, that things tend to get very aggressive here in the early going or the late going. We'll be back with more from Circuit Icon.
of 11 in the 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series. Riding on board with a man from St. Estache, Quebec, Kevin Lacroix, as he chases the leader in the 51, Andrew Ranger. on the brakes down into turn number three. We've got to thank Rick Ware for the color he's brought to this series. That's as colorful a top three as we've ever had. Yeah, normally you get used to seeing the black and the white cars, some red spackled in there, but purple and yellow is uh, difficult to miss in the Miles for Migraine sponsor number 51 of Andrew Ranger for sure. Alex Tagliani, I mean, he's keeping himself right in that battle as well as Kevin Lacroix looks to the inside of Ranger down into turn number one. Hard on the brakes and down through the gears. Still early going, so Ranger's going to try and cross over, but not fight him too hard. So he'll slot in behind the Dodge Challenger, but new race leader, Kevin Lacroix. And you could see Ranger tried to get on the throttle as he crossed him over, and there was just no grip at all. So tucks himself in between Lacroix and Tagliani. You can see that left front tire coming up just a little bit on some of these bumps. On Andrew Ranger on the look back from Kevin Lacroix. They're coming into lap traffic, though. Yeah, the field is strung out a fair bit. The next car ahead of them is J.F. LaBerge driving the car that is leading the owner's point. So, Dave White, we talk about the driver's championship all the time. The owner's championship goes to the car number. So, Dave White owns the 80 car that was driven by Rafael Lassard the first three races. J.F. LaBerge is picking up points for Dave White today. Here's a good look at Luc Lesage in the number 25. Matthew Skinnell in the 7. That car is having a good run from Skinnell, who hasn't made a start yet here in 2021. That's a battle for ninth spot on the racetrack. So Skinnell has been helping, actually, Larry Jackson on his pit crew. Got the opportunity to drive, and he'll drive again at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Howie Scannell turning a lot of wrenches for Larry Jackson in that O'Neill Electric Supply number 84. We talked about his problems. Crashed hard into the retaining barrier there in practice early on. They worked hard just to get that car able to start this race. Now look at the lap traffic right in front of the leader. The TCB Trailers number three of Brett Taylor talks to the inside, but look at the gap that's evaporated. Now Tagliani looking for second. Man, Tag threw the car up the inside. He'll try to get a nose alongside Brett Taylor in the three to it to keep that track position, but he's got Andrew Ranger alongside him fighting back for second. Tag talked about his team at 22 Racing. Right side, right side. So they're clear. There's a spotter's help. Andrew Ranger through lap traffic, but Tag was saying that they normally find some magic for the race, and they seem to have struck gold here for the driver of the 18 as he is able to move up a spot and now chase the bumper to bumper number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. It's a perfect marriage Alex Tagliani with the Scott Steckley team as we've got some smoke out the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. You can see it coming right out the back end. Doesn't look like it's coming out the exhaust at this point. There you see a really good look at it. The, the perfect marriage between Steckley and Alex Tagliani is Tagliani is probably the most demanding driver on what he wants out of a car, and Scott Steckley might be the most demanding team owner and what he's able to put into a car and get for that driver. We're still watching the number 20 of Trayton Lapsovich, who's only fallen off the pace a little bit as Skinnell moves to the inside of the 25 of Luc Lesage. Lesage coming off a top 10 at GP3R in our last outing. And having an equally good run, that was a battle for eight spot. Mark Antoine Cameron put the pressure on Andrew Ranger for the third position. The GM Pie Chevrolet number 22 looks to the inside. There you can see some of the differences in those two cars. You saw the defroster across the windshield of Cameron, but you can see the brake blowers set up to blow air on the windshield for Andrew Ranger, all in an effort to keep that cloud free as we get into some raindrops here at Sir Cree Icar. These drivers are gifted. They're very good. Some of the best road racers you'll find in North America. They can drive in wet conditions. Nobody can drive blind if you can't see in front of you. 
and back in the beginning days, the early days of racing in the rain, that was the biggest obstacle. And now the 20, Quickwick sponsored entry of Trayton Lapsovich down pit lane. So the smoke got a little bit heavier. The team calling him down to pit lane to see what's up, Don. The smoke is visible from that 20 car. It has been visible for several laps now. The team talked about it. They're going first to that right rear area. That's what they think might be the source of it. They were discussing amongst themselves what the problem was. No one's really sure yet, but they believe the source is from the right rear rear. But that smoke was definitely getting worse. That's Jeff Lapsovich giving instructions to Scott Steckley, the team owner, looking for jack stance. I don't know if they rolled the car back because he, he overshot the pit stall or if they wanted to see where there might be oil on the ground. Roll them backwards, see where the oil lands, you'll know where the leak is. So they go laps down as they try to diagnose and then fix the issues. On the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich, and there's the 17 of DJ Kennington. Look at Alex Gannett in the 52. He's run here a handful of times. As a matter of fact, three times at Circuit Icar on a different configuration, but he's finished with two top fives. It's funny, one of the times he raced here on the longer configuration, I believe we watched his sister race in a truck on this configuration. On board, Ray Cordemos Jr. in the EHR number eight. Portemont will be back for Canadian Tire Motorsport Park as well. Running in the 14th position is Portemont as we look at the Motos Limite, number 52 of Alice Gannett. Such an interesting line they run in that turn one hairpin. It's like they use the sewer grate as the mark. That's where they want to get their left front, left side tires onto. So it gives them a bit of a wider entry into that turn into this hairpin in turn number three problems that's turn number five and it's the three of brett sailor and the 98 of sam fellows and fellows has stalled it sam showing his displeasure to brett taylor trying to get that car to fire we would see it you'll see the smoke out the pipes we have gone under yellow let's have another look he still does not have that car fired on board the curb records number 98 and there you can see sam fellows open up the door and a thump on the inside and around he goes you can actually hear the impact there as brett taylor gets into him an insult to injury they both stop so they can face each other <laughs> give each other a wave or two under a full course caution here outside of montreal welcome back to the nascar pinty series on tsn as the field Get set to go back to green here in the La Fernandier 75 Summer Classic at Circuit Icar. Good look at Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22. You know what he goes. It was a look at Mark Antoine Cameron looking. Looking forward, he's watching that back bumper of the 74 of Kevin Lacroix because when he goes, you go. That's what the spotters are telling him. As soon as Lacroix starts, that's when you want to go, and Lacroix gets a great jump to turn one. Oh, Tagliani into the back corner of the 74. What a great save by Kevin Lacroix as we ride on board with LP Dumoulin. The field side by side from third on back as the 52 of Alex Gannett looks to the inside of the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Now they file all together in single file, but Tagliani slots into second. Still up on the outside, though, is the 51 of Andrew Rangers going backwards. We ride on board with Sam Fellows, who got that car refired, but he did lose a lap. There's the 47 WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin. And how about the 92 of Dexter Stacy, who is moving up this running order, currently sitting in ninth spot. Keep an eye on that police truck stop, number 92. LP Dumoulin getting a little bit loose. Battling alongside Alex Gannett. So drivers left off a of one and then to the outside through turn number two. Look at him motioning to Alex Gannett. It's almost like he wants him to get in line. Follow me so we don't let the leaders get too far away. Yeah, there's an expression, Dave. I don't think I can talk about it on this particular <laughs> broadcast, but go or get out of the way. 
pretty much the size of it, and it looks like the WeatherTech Dodge wants to go and wants to go right now. So LP Jumelay has slotted himself just outside the top five, currently sitting in sixth. It's a long time off the throttle and then a slow venture up through the paces once again as we rode with Alex Gannett. Kevin Lacroix out in front, but Alex Tagliani keeping him in his sights. The Rona Viagra, number 18 of Tagliani, is starting to close that gap just a little bit. He falls back about four car lengths or so and then manages to gather it back up, almost looking for his opportunity for the 74 to put a tire wrong. It's the sounds that are impressive to me of this sport, Dave. And one thing we need to mention before we go too far, sad news this week in the NASCAR world. Pierre Bork, a driver out of Ottawa who raced with us a number of times across the country, has passed away. Yeah, very sad news. Shocking news as well. Uh, Pierre Bork, a uh, staple on the NASCAR Pinty Series circuit for many years and definitely drivers uh, racing with heavy hearts here today. You know what's interesting as we look out the front window of the 18 of Alex Tagliani to the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Lacroix won the last time we raced on this configuration in 2017, five years ago. In that race, he only led five laps, the ones that counted most. The one where they throw the checkered flag, that's where you want to be out front. That's the one they pay you for, too. And in that race in 2017, the man chasing him led a race high 61, Alex Tagliani. So these two, definitely the class of the field on this configuration. We're getting reports around the racetrack that the rain is starting to fall again. Now we don't see it on the windshield of Alex Tagliani. But I believe our, our reporters and spotters around the racetrack. Yeah, it feels like it's uh, falling more in turn one than it is over towards turns five and six. But we'll definitely keep an eye on it because it won't take long for this track to slip, slick up with a little bit of moisture on it. We just saw it from that camera angle. Adjacent to this racetrack is still an active airport. And the other side of the airport are trees. And we've seen it numerous times raining. And there we go. The yeah. track is definitely slicking up. You can barely you can see the mist between here and the trees. It's just a matter of when it arrives here at the racetrack, but it has been right next door for the longest time. And it has been all day. Now look at the window from Andrew Ranger. You can see the water beating up on the front windscreen of the number 51. On a good day, the water beats up, so a lot of these teams will use product on the windshield to make that happen. Way by 20, Mark. The last thing you want to do is use that windshield wiper. Once you smear everything across the windshield, there's no going back. Inside, 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 inside. You feel it inside. around to the outside. A little bit of contact. And, and running the outside of a corner in a wet race or a damp track is not necessarily a bad thing. The racing line in the rain isn't necessarily right down on the inside curving because the rubber buildup there makes it incredibly slippery. Yeah, and you can see Cameron sliding across the track there. The oil's in the rubber and the water hits it and brings it up. It's very slick. So often, you're better driving in the area that normally has the, what we call the marbles on the track. Full court caution. Full court. And rain causing a full course caution. And that will bunch the field for the second time. So NASCAR deciding to err on the side of caution, throw the caution flag here today. And they'll bring the cars in for some wet weather tires. See if you get those tires ready. I think they're just going to bring everybody down pit road here and stop it. But the message getting out to the crews right now to prepare the wet weather general tires that we haven't used yet in the NASCAR Pinty Series. So it's going to be interesting when we return to Zerkri Icar here on TSN. Welcome back to NASCAR Pinty Series Racing on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley. Adam Ross is joining me in the booth, and Todd Lewis is trackside. All cars have pitted, and all have been fitted with wet weather tires. They have so, and we look out the front of Alice Tagliani again with the defroster lines in that windshield for visibility. Kevin Lacroix runs a similar system 
Still, they choose to leave the windshield wipers off, but this track is very wet. Brett Taylor with the free pass. He is back on the lead lap. And you'll notice a flashing red light on the backs of these cars as well. And that will increase the visibility. Look at how much slower they go through turn number one the first time back in the green. Fortunately, visibility still looks pretty good for drivers deep in the field. The concern in these conditions is the rooster tail that comes off these tires. You see each car puts off a trail of mist behind it. So once you get about 15 cars back in the row, it's a lot of mist. And you can see no driver deciding to use their window wiper on the front of these race cars at this point. So relying on that product to let the water be there. Clear by one and a half. So we hear the all clear there, and I'm not sure whose voice that was. We were just with Sam Fellows. I know his dad, Ron Fellows, is spotting for him, but I couldn't tell if that was Ron's voice we were hearing. Sounded like Ron, and neat to have a Canadian Motorsport Hall of Famer in your ear coaching you in your first road course. Not a street course, of course. He did the street course at Grand Prix Trois Rivières. This is his first road course for Sam Fellows. You know what? He looks good out there. Trois Rivières, they had braking trouble, and that had to be so frustrating. The problem was the brakes weren't releasing properly. You can't drive a race car when the, when the brakes are hung on. It, it messes with your setup. It messes with everything. You can see just how gingerly these drivers are pedaling these cars around this racetrack. Dumoulin to the inside, Cameron swinging way wide in turn number three and trying to carry that momentum on the outside. Dumoulin will get a drive off as they'll head to turn number four. You'll see them shifting a lot less, so instead of going down to first gear in some of these corners, they might just go down to second gear and let the car lug a little bit for traction coming off the corners. And we've seen, no, oh, we've got problems, and it is the 47 and the 18 of Tagliani. Tagliani qualified third, was sitting in second, and sat backwards for a quick second, managed to refire and get going. No caution, but so many positions lost for the driver of the 18. Let's have another look at this down into corner five. See, Tagliani was taking that rain line way up on the outside, and the 47 took advantage. Yeah, it just looks like a misjudgment on the part of L.P. Dumoulin. But we do stay green. Dumoulin is now... There. Getting passed by Still the high A number 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron, who works the outside. There. Now that Still switch there. back Still in there. turn number six, seven will be a left hander onto the front straightaway. No visible damage to the front of LP Dumoulin, so and I didn't see any on the 18 attack the Annie either that should cause them any problems as this race progresses, but I'll bet you attack the Annie is just steaming inside that helmet. Oh yeah, he'll gonna he's going to need the window blowers on the front windscreen to keep the steam from fogging things up. But you can see it doesn't take much. Just a little nudge in the rain. The track is so slippery. These drivers just barely hanging on to traction. And one little touch and a car can go around. There's Matthew Skinnell holding off a challenge from the Castor Ledge Dodge of DJ Kennington. Yeah, made a nice pass there on DJ. DJ even gave him a push there through the corner. And that's still having a good run. Look, this is the exit of turn number four. We talk about how flat this place is. There's a significant hump on the exit of turn four, which makes things even dicier in the wet here. It sure looks to be. And how about Dexter Stacy in that 92? What a battle. We've got Scannell in the seven, DJ Kennington in the 17, Dexter Stacy in the 92, and there's, there's more drivers at this party. Stacy having a solid run today. He had a solid run at the Grand Prix of 20 Vier. Just the last race coming home, a solid 10 or a top 10 in that event in the 92. So his confidence is growing back as the 18 continues to march his way back up towards the front. Yeah, Tagliani is in that battle now, and so is Luke Lesage in the 25. Scannell and the Dave Jacobs prepared number seven. That car will be wheeled by Kyle Marcelli at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, but there's the gap between the top two. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix, Andrew Ranger in the 51. Now, 
If you were to put money on the top two rain or wet weather drivers in the NASCAR Pinty Series, you would probably be a safe bet on either Lacroix or Ranger. They're just so good with their car control. They're you know what? As I think about it, all of our elite road course racers are pretty darn good on both surfaces. Like, normally you look at who has a weakness, who has an exposed weakness, and I'm not going to pick on Alex Kinnett, but since we jumped into his car, as a top five car in the dry, I would say Alex Kinnett gives away maybe a position or two when we go to wet, but they're all so good. Yeah, even if you're a so-called oval master, if you've been born and bred on oval tracks in Ontario, like a Trayton Laps of it, for example. Doesn't take him long to pick up things, and you can see the fog is hampering the visibility of Ray Quartermanche Jr. That is fogged up indeed. But driver like Trayton Laps of it, of course, he's many laps down here uh, in this race, but he'll be back out to gain experience in this event, try and gain points as well. Matthew scannell has been doing a great job this whole race. Do you think it's coincidence that the 18 car gets to his rearview mirror and he missed that corner? I don't think so. You look in your rearview mirror and you can see who's back there. And you know how hungry Tag will be to get back to the front in the Rona Viagra Chevrolet. Admittedly, Matthew Scannell does not have a lot of experience racing in the rain, but that does have to be unnerving. One of the best in the world closing in from behind. Tech the Annie going to swing to the inside, and his wiper is working. It's only a few drivers out there running their windshield wipers, and Alice Tech the Annie is one of them. Scannell will get the call that the 18 was there, gives them plenty of room, and they'll slot back in single file. DJ Kennington in that line as well in the Castrol Edge Dodge. On board your race leader, though, in the bumper to bumper, Dodge Challenger Kevin Lacroix. Look at how much of a lead he's built up. And you talk about the top two drivers in the rain, the top two drivers in the dry. How about here at ICAR? Four out of seven wins for Andrew Ranger. Two wins in three races for Kevin Lacroix, and he has led a lot of laps. Both drivers have. You remember, Ranger was so dominant here until a driver like Kevin Lacroix showed up and started to challenge him at Sir Cree ICAR. And then it became a two-horse race. So it's exciting to see them in positions one and two here in this 75-lap feature. Kevin Lacroix changed the way this series races on a road course. So, you know, people always talked about conserving equipment, saving something for the end. Kevin Lacroix came here, put the hammer down, and drove away. Forced everybody else to figure out how to do it. And remember, he finished on the podium at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières after a late race dice with the 47 of L.P. Jumelay. But we've yet to see the driver of the 74 visit Victory Lane here in 2021, which is a little bit surprising. A little bit. It surprised me that he wasn't dominant in any of the events. So we've seen Kevin Lacroix run at the front and not win races. We haven't seen Kevin Lacroix fail to be the, the pace setter, first or second, almost anywhere. And he didn't look that way at all this year so far. He sure looks good here today. Welcome back to round number four of 11 in the 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series. Your leader continues to be 32-year-old Kevin Lacroix from St. Estache, Quebec, who has opened up a huge lead on Andrew Ranger, who currently runs second. Yeah, we're only about 15 minutes from the home of Kevin Lacroix right here in Mirabelle at Circuit ICAR. And some of the changes they've made here have been fantastic. Where the grandstands are, they've put some grandstands right off of pit road at the start-finish line. It, it looks better and better every time we come. And also looking better and better is the racing line. The rain has really let up here in the last few minutes, and you can see the heated up general tires have dried almost a full racing line here, so the driver is able to get a little bit more traction. Luke Lesage putting the pressure on the 92 at Dexter Stacy. Stacy has to gingerly go around Larry Jackson. Lesage got a little better run there through five, six, and seven. We'll see if he can turn that into a move down in turn one. It's a battle for eighth position. Dexter Stacy currently holds it. Luke Lesage wants it. They are two laps down to your race leader, leader currently.
Yeah, you can definitely see the groove is widening out. There's still one preferred groove, but if someone wanted to make a move, there's a little bit of dry concrete there that they could do it with. And, and that's what's difficult because you don't have the ability to really dive to the inside of the racetrack because if you do, you head down into a puddle or at least a wet patch of racetrack, you jump on the brakes, it's not going to stick as well. It's risk versus reward. As we look at Alex Tagliani running in the sixth spot, you make that move to the inside, you're going to slide into the car beside you. It's not going to end well. Tagliani doing a great job at trying to track down the top five, but he has your race leader not too far behind. That's how quick the 74 of Kevin Lacroix is. So Lacroix, nobody around him at all in that 74 machine. He's just out for a leisurely Saturday afternoon drive. He really is, because if you saw him off turn number two earlier in the race, he was pushing the track limits. That time, he cut it to the inside, wanted to stay in the dry lane as Dexter Stacy pushes the limits of attraction on those general tires, and there goes Le Lesage. Stacy pushed up out of the groove and trying to fight the car back in. He got it sideways. Lesage able to get by. Remember what we talked about? Man, am I impressed. Dexter Stacy was able to keep that car down the track as hard as he drove it into the corner. Now it's Lesage, the one who got out of the racing groove up into the wet stuff and got a little tail happy in the 25. Have another look at what happened to Stacy. Stacy got up out of the groove, tries to put the power down. Lesage had wisely already made that move. Now, Dexter Stacy is a veteran dirt racer, so he is used to turning the wheel one way to go another. <laughs> but even for him, that was a challenging move. And look, at the, I can't believe the car stuck for him down in the corner. No contact even with the 25. Managed to keep off the driver's door of the 20 Vier Toyota sponsored number 25 of Luc Lesage. Find a hole for it where you're safe. So fight. Okay, we're hearing someone say find a hole where you're safe. Mark Antoine Cameron with problems out on the racetrack in that GM Pie number 22. I don't know that there is a safe spot. What we did to deserve it. It's crazy. And there you can hear that's coming into turn number four. I hear you, Mark. I hear you. Yeah, Randy Stackley trying to console his driver, Mark Antoine Cambrian, but such a frustrating time it has been for this talented race car driver. Yeah, he was frustrated in several races. Five laps to go and no caution yet as your leader works through lap traffic. That's TJ Rinomato just ahead. So Cambrian finds a safe spot to pull off and NASCAR yet to throw the caution. We're keeping an eye on the flag stand though. Yeah, that's a suspicious spot that Cameron has stopped in. There's really no, he's a little bit out of the way, but certainly not a, out of harm's way. And there it is, full course caution once again. And that is the caution that Kevin Laquan did not want to see. That'll put the 51 on his back bumper. And there you can see the stricken Pie Chevrolet number 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. We talked about the frustrating season. This was race number one at Sunset Speedway. And then at Circuit 20 Vier, more issues with the drivetrain as he was running inside the top five comfortably. He's been fast. Unfortunately, luck has not gone his way as Cameron back in the pits and he's out. Yeah, he climbs out of that race car. Not a happy camper. I mean, Mark Antoine Cameron, no secret, he has won on an oval track. But What's let's up? listen. That didn't sound good. It wasn't even a bump or anything, but something broke in the drivetrain of the number 22. But the 18 of Alex Tagliani, down pit lane from fifth spot on the racetrack. It's not going to hurt him too much. He'll be able to restart from the third row if they get out in time. Slide in and grab a quick word, Mark Antoine Cameron. I can see the frustration on your face. This year has been a struggle so far. Yeah, I don't know what we did. I mean, the, again, the GM Payet was really, really fast on those conditions. I was trying to save in, you know, the, the stuff and try to uh, hang around on the track. I was running P3, something, and you know, in the back. I think it's a dry shaft or a rear run or something like that. Can't believe it. Mossport, let's say. Thanks, Mark. And really, Mark Antoine Cameron, known as a great road racer. 
He has won on an oval track, but really the road course is where he wants to get it done. Setting up for an exciting finish, a green-white checker here at Circuit Icar. We've already gone the distance. So this is NASCAR overtime. Kevin Lacroix and Andrew Ranger hard on the gas as they head to turn one. Keep an eye on that 18 machine, the Rona Viagra 18 of Alice Tagliani. Not sure what they adjusted on, but give that crew time to work and they can perform Whoa. miracles. Oh boy. Big issues deeper in the field. The 25 of Luke Lesage up and over the front end of the number 80 of JF LaBerge. And that will be another caution. So we didn't see the white flag. That means we will try another green-white check. Remember, Adam, off the top of the show, we talked about fuel mileage. Yeah, this is not going to help. We have had a couple of yellow flags. That helps these teams conserve fuel, but this will also take a minute or two to clear the car off the track. Look to the right of your screen. They just caught wheels on the outside of turn number one. On board with Sam Fellows. Maybe a little contact there from the seven of Matthew Skinnell into the door of the 25. Yeah, whatever whatever happened there, I don't think the 80 was the cause by any stretch unless he got loose, but he definitely got run over. We get the field stacked up. Let's try this one more time. One more driver gets the free pass as DJ Kennington, the casserole ledge 17, back on the lead lap, back in contention. So last time Ranger was able to keep pace with the 74 at the drop of the green. They went into turn number one practically side by side. Can they do it again? You can see that dry line off turn number seven. Back to green we go. Green, white, checkered, three wide down into turn number one. Look at Tagliani go. You said watch the 18 the last time we went back to green and we're still three wide into turn number two. Now it's side by side. Dumoulin gets past Tagliani, Ranger. And Tagliani side by side. And to be clear, DJ Kennington got the free pass on the last yellow. Dexter Stacy got it this time. He is half a lap behind the field. To the inside, the 51 of Ranger back up into second spot around the WeatherTech Dodge of LB Dumoulin. You can hear hitting that bump on the exit of turn number four as the driver is able to push as hard as they can. Now on almost 40 lap old wet weather tires but they're holding up very very well the white flag is out alex tagliani has caught lp dumoulin remember dumoulin is the reason that he was backwards having to drive back through the field so alex tagliani has lots of motivation to try to catch that 47. He does indeed alex Gannett. there's dj kennington as we look a little bit further back through the field as fellows moves around ray cordemos jr in the eighth We ride on board with Cordemanche up at the front. Nothing has changed right now. Just two more braking zones. One big braking zone for these drivers. But Kevin Lacroix, he has controlled this race. And he's got a sizable lead, able to ease his way through turn number five. Two more turns to go here at Circuit Icar. He'll see the checkered flag for the first time in 2021. Give the win to Kevin Lacroix. Ranger comes home second, LP Dumoulin in third, and Kevin Lacroix going to do a victory donut. I don't, I don't know if that was planned or not. He seemed to truck it hard into turn number one, but why not turn it into some donuts? It's hard to enjoy a soggy donut, Dave. <laughs> Crew congratulating each other. You saw Don Thompson Jr. climbing down off the top of the pit box. Boy, this win has been a long time coming for that team here in 2021. When we return, we'll talk to them in victory lane. The third time he's visiting victory lane here at Sir Cree Icar, and Kevin Lacroix hops out of his race car. Kevin Lacroix is unbuckled and unstrapped, and now he is climbing out of that number 74 bumper-to-bumper -bumper car, hoisting the checkered flag, and yeah, up on the roof to celebrate in front of a hometown crowd. Kevin Lacroix, it sure looked like you had the fastest car all day long. Wet, dry, didn't seem to manage. You were able to stay well out in front. Yeah, I was uh, quite happy when it started raining because uh, uh, honestly, uh, Tagliani, Alex was very fast behind me and I thought maybe it was going, uh, my car was uh, going a little tight. So when it started raining, uh, I knew uh, I had a good shot. Uh, 
It's funny when we were talking at the job uh, this week, and I said, uh, you know, there is uh, some rain coming up, so uh, a win for sure. So, <laughs> I feel very comfortable comfortable on the on the rain, but uh, so the bumper to bumper car, bumper to bumper car was uh, very good all day. Uh, practice qualifying and obviously the race so thank you thank you to all the team congratulations kevin lacroix your winner here at circuit icar he called his shot earlier in the week said if it rains we will win that's exactly what kevin lacroix did so all the usual suspects in the top three or four good run for alex Gannett, dj kennington always solid and how about dexter stacy up in seven and there you can see the back half uh, mark antoine cameron disappointing once again here at Circuit Icar. And there you see Jennifer Booth from Pinty's with the trophy celebration. Kevin Lacroix standing on top of the podium. What a race it was. Well worth the drive to Mirabel. Let's look at the point standings in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Alex Tagliani said, I want to have a good points day. Here he sits atop the standings. Four points back to LP Dumoulin. You see DJ Kennington, Trayton Lapsovich trading spots in fourth and fifth. It's going to be a big celebration at the racetrack tonight as the hometown team brought home the win. The fourth race of the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN has been brought to you by Quickwick, the world's number one fire starter. By Total Quartz, keep your engine younger for longer. By Mopar, we built it, we know it. And by Das Metal Studs and Rebar, proud partner of RGC Sports in the NASCAR Pinty Series. From one road course, we head to another, a doubleheader weekend at CTMP, Dave. The first one will be the OLML 30 at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. From all of us at Fuel Media Lab, we'll see you there. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast. Friday Night Football, presented by The Brick on TSN.